literally off the chain, off the rockers, off the meds. You know it's true. Nathan Ivy with you. This is the Nathan Ivy Show, your morning destination for interesting conversation. Uh, any thoughts on Bill Cosby? Bill Cosby is, is being reported this morning is going to have to stay in trial. And I, for one, don't have any remorse for the man at all. Zero remorse for him. Let me watch out remorse for him. Bill Cosby don't give a damn about you. Bill Cosby probably has no game. Or Bill Cosby is a sexual predator. And his MO, his modus operandi, his MO is he likes to engage women in conversation, get them in safe places under some rules about going over lines. Or if you're a young starlet in Hollywood and you're talking to Bill Cosby, you think he might give you a job or open the door for you. And he might after he opened up the pill bottle and, and shoved a few into one of your glass flutes. All these people run around making excuses for Bill Cosby. And you know, damn well, where there's smoke, there's fire. Do I believe all the allegations? Absolutely not. Some of these stuff are just obviously on their face wrong. They're probably planted there by Bill Cosby people, really. Because if you can get a, the television dad, Americans of the millennium, and he likes to date drug mimic. He likes to, 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 to put something in your drink you now are under your unconscious, do things to you while you're out, and then when you wake up, try to play you like you're a fool. Like, what you talking about? You came on to me. Oh, you just passed out. Just passed out. And all kinds of stuff is coming out from his testimony from that case in Pennsylvania, including all types of details of numerous women that Bill Cosby gave a few pills to, to quote unquote, take the edge off, take the edge off. Yeah, you mean take my free choice and free will away, take my choice away because you're going to render me unconscious. That is deep. Apparently Bill Cosby might've been flirting with uh, some teenager back in 2000. That's only 15 years ago. So, Leon, I'm not trying to get into his business like that because I don't want to. But are, do you now believe the Bill Cosby allegations? Do you believe that they have some validity, that there is some truth in them? Or do you believe that it's all sort of a snowball effect? It's It was started as a few women who were trying to either, either they were jilted lovers or they were trying to con some money out of Mr. Bill Cosby and it became a snowball effect because as a black man, it makes as better media fodder. The media is more, much more willing to run with these stories about Bill Cosby because he's a black man with a lot of money. Sort of like the OJ thing. Uh, which side do you believe? Which is more believable to you? That is deep. And listen, this is exactly what Bill Cosby deserves, quite honestly. He deserves this because let's break it down. If he actually did some of the things he's accused of, he obviously deserves that, right? Because he's a sexual predator. If he didn't do any of it, he still deserves it in a way because he set himself up for it with all of this moralizing that he was doing 10 years ago about the black community. He set himself up as this holier than thou figure in the world society. So when a, when a little bit of mud comes his way, it's going to make for a bigger story. That's why the media is, that's why people are flocking to it because he set himself up as this decent TV dad. He was Cliff Huxtable who cared about HBCUs. He cared about young black uh talented individuals and because of all of that it makes for a bigger story so I, I don't really have a lot of sympathy for Bill Cosby because Bill Cosby had no sympathy when he was maligning the character generalizing painting with a broad brush when he was talking about brothers and he was talking about poor black people he had no problem with it and I got a cool call out the bourgeois Z the bourgeois class inside the black community.
because many of them were running with that nonsense. Oh, cheerleading them. Oh, Bill Cosby's the man to say it. Pull your pants up. You know, all this nonsense. I blame you too. And now we find out that the entire time that he's running around talking about poor black people, he sh- <laughs> he's setting up women to fail. That is going to be very interesting. And just because he's older now and he's suffering from all these vision problems and I, the, the and, and I'm sure there were a lot of women who woke up, right? And their vision was blurry as well as their body was fighting off and dealing with the effects of the drugs that he slipped into their drinks. I, I, all I'll say is this. If you were alone with Bill Cosby, okay? And he offered you a drink, like, oh, would you like something, a refreshment? It's like, no, I'm not thirsty. Thank you, Bill. I'm on a water diet, no liquids. You got to think about these things ahead of time. I'm just saying. Oh, you know what? I'm on that new diet. What's that? No liquids. No li- You want some soup? That's still a liquid, Bill. Why are you trying to give me liquids, Bill? Because if you're an attractive woman, He's going to render you unconscious and try to take advantage of you. That's why. That's why. More news. More news that we must share with you this morning. Okay, currently 827 a.m. My name is Nathan Ivey. This is the Nathan Ivey Show. If you're just tuning in, You missed uh, clips of separate interviews that I did just yesterday at the Avondale Town Center. They had a big press conference. There were many people there, actually. Uh, Many people from the press, uh, members of council. Uh, Amy Murray. I I actually saw an Amy Murray. I saw an Amy Murray. I actually saw her. It's like, wow, it exists. I've heard about this thing called an Amy Murray, but I've never really seen it in action. But uh, Amy Murray, I'm having fun. Amy Murray, member of city council, was there as well. She spoke. And she was just talking just to say she was there. Let's be honest. I speak no lies. She didn't really have anything meaningful to add. I ain't hating on her. I'm sure she does a lot of great work. But, I mean, you know, her comments, I didn't even catch them on camera. Also, the Justice Department is seeking the death penalty for the Charleston church shooter, Dylan Roof. Or Roth. Uh, did we come up with some uh, determination on Roof or Roth yet? And here's the man who walked into a church, prayed with these individuals for a few minutes, and then opened fire, killing many of them. Uh, how do you feel about them going for the death penalty in this case? Uh, let me be honest with you. Even in this case, I do not support the death penalty, and that's a hard pill to swallow. It really is. Now, if one of the family members decided to take justice upon their own hands and I was on the jury, I might be sympathetic. But that's not what happened. We're talking about state sanctioned taking the life of another citizen because that person forfeit their their ability to, to breathe. What? And that's a tough one, because in that case, he slaughtered people in the church. That makes us mad. That makes me angry. Those women, those those people were defenseless. They were in a church, a house of God. Somebody has to pay. But again, perpetuating the state's ability to take away your ultimate gift, a gift given to you by God, I think cheapens the life of each and every citizen. That's just me, but what about you? What about you? Deanna writes that Dr. Odell Owens was just announced as the interim commissioner. Absolutely great to hear. I know they had a big meeting just yesterday. I caught some of it from separate videos on Facebook yesterday. That's great to hear. Dale writes, yes, I agree. Bill Cosby was even touring, making money off of his so-called chastising, condemning of the black community. I don't feel sorry for him. F him. Woo. Brent writes, I'm not defending Bill Cosby, but I have to wonder about the prosecutor's motive and these women who have come forward decades after the fact. Eric writes, women blast Rick Ross when he did the pill and drinking thing, but I have an excuse for the bill. 
Right, but have an excuse for Bill. Right, they do. <laughs> Terrence writes, here's something to take your draws off. I mean, uh, the edge off. <laughs> Oh, my God. The truth. Nothing is funnier than the truth. And Brent, stop defending Bill Cosby. Ms. D. writes, Nate, I think people are defending Cliff Hustable and not really Bill Cosby. Well, the nose people have problems because Cliff Hustable was a character. He doesn't really exist. Those people should not be allowed to vote. No. Brent writes, uh, there are extended nuclear families now staying home because of the expense to live on the economy is getting difficult to handle. <laughs> Kashana writes, man, my mom used to say that nothing was open past midnight but legs shaping my head. I had to be in by midnight for that reason, LOL. What? <laughs> what? What? Your mom used to say that nothing was open past midnight but legs. I mean, you got some fast food places these days. A lot of places open after midnight. That is funny. That is hilarious. Now, you telling me 1130? Come on now. 1130, 11. It's still dark outside. <laughs> uh, Tracy writes, I'm so fried today. Hashtag prostituters. <laughs> Ms. D writes, y'all are cracking me up with these stories. These stories are hilarious. That's the only story I got. I just got called just that one time. Or I would share with you. Pops rode in and it was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Thanks, Pop. You know, I remember that whole day. It was just like a real, when I was around him, I was just like, ah, oh, he knows. Then after that, we didn't say anything. Just kind of went away. Brittany writes, Nate, why do you think the women took so long to report? Could it be they were getting hush-hush money and the money stopped for decreased? I'm just saying, Nate, they need to be investigated as well. I, I think it's the nature of being sexually abused. It's the nature of it. I think when, when people are younger, let's say in their 20s, and something happens to them, it may take into their 40s or 50s until they can emotionally process it to a point where they want to tell anybody. Where they, and then the other thing about it is being the victim ain't fun. Who wants to be a victim on TV? Who wants to go on television and say such and such victimized me? No, no man or woman wants to do that. So I think it takes until people get older and they realize, you know what? Coming forward is a part of the process in my own personal healing. And then they say, listen. Money or not, I'm going to come forward because I want to go past it. I want to move past it. And I think it can take decades. There's some people who die and never come to that realization. And that's what I believe. And I think you'll see the same, no matter what the gender, you'll see people reacting with it the same way. Look at what happened with Africa Bombada. This man claims this stuff happened 25 years ago, and I believe him, by the way. Because who the hell wants to come forward and say the Africa Bambada sexually assaulted you i mean there's nothing fresh in that nobody's calling you up like hey, you ain't getting no calls from obama you know jay and beyonce are not calling you saying you know what we want to wish you come condolences we heard that you was sexually assaulted by africa bambada nobody's doing that so i think that's why i mean i think it's perfectly reasonable and here's the real issue since that's true then why is there even a statute of limitations when it comes to rapes and sexual assaults? Since we now understand it could be, take decades, right? If ever, for people to get to a point where they want to come forward. That's what I think. I think. Rashida writes, Nate, thank you for speaking about the silence of victims. I wish more people understood the emotional side of the physical abuse. Took me 30 years to speak aloud. Hashtag no longer a victim. She's right. She's telling you. She's absolutely, that's exactly what's going on with people. They bury it so deep. They blame themselves. They do all these kind of things because they don't want to deal with it no more. That's the other thing. If something bad like that happened to you, you just don't want to think about it anymore. You want to move on, I'm sure. But it takes years before people realize that 
pointing that finger at the person that did it to you, telling the world, having your day in court is a part of you getting over it. It's a part.